Hey, Chicago, what do you say? This is the CHGO Cubs podcast, and they are the red hot Chicago Cubs. Luke Stuckmeyer, Ryan Herrera, the beer bat boy, Cody Del Mendo down there ready with his 3 1 2 to party with you. Del Mendo's got the hat backwards. I always got the beer ready. He's got the bat ready. We've got the chat ready. Did we get to 20 likes? I said we, we I wouldn't start until likes. we got 20 likes. Cody People already Del predicting. Lato, I'm, I'm not the reason we're late. <clears throat> I won't say why we are, but I'm not the reason we're late. Thank you. Bad Hunt says the Cubs are so back to being back. An 8 nothing win over the Pirates. Five straight they've won against the Pirates. In the stat at the end of the broadcast, they show seven-plus runs in each of those games. Cubs back to within four games of the 500 mark. They've won eight of their last ten. I asked in pregame, do you believe that the Cubs can actually do it in this division? Cody, I know, has been reeled back in. Ryan, as a guy who's at the ballpark an awful lot and in that clubhouse, do you believe they'll be in the mix? Um, yeah, I mean, the... the the, the bad division obviously helps. Yes. I mean, I said it preseason. I said it the first couple of months and like that, you know. There was a few weeks there where it didn't really seem that great. But, like, it was I, – I was still of the belief that even if they weren't going to win the division, they could make some noise and be playing meaningful baseball in September. And I still think that it's – I never really got away from that because I didn't think they were as bad as they were playing. Yeah. Like, I didn't think that – I mean – they may not be as good as they were in April. Like they were, there were some games where they were, there were some points where they were just really, really good, and it felt like the Cubs aren't pro- probably aren't this good, right? There's some points like that, um, but there was plenty of points during that month of May and like into June that it was like this team is not this bad. Like yeah. this team is not should not be playing this bad. Um, and I there was points where yeah, again it didn't look great, but I kind of had that feeling that they would bounce back a little bit. And this is the point where they've started to make up some of the some of that ground. So, yeah, I, I've kind of the whole time believed they could be playing meaningful baseball in September. Um, if that month of May had stretched any longer, like, they may not even gotten to that point because of trade deadline reasons. Uh, but now they're kind of getting to a point where they keep rattling off some wins, you know, beating up on NL Central teams, staying in the mix right there. Yeah, they're, I definitely think they can still be in the mix come September. I'm just glad that they got hot when they did because this Reds team is starting to scare me. They won again tonight, what, mm-hmm. nine in a row for them. They got a lot of young talent. Joey Votto's back, and we all think he's the going to be in the Hall of Fame one day. I don't know if they have the pitching, and that's the one thing I do think the Cubs do have that will carry them hmm. all season. It has carried them all season. So, again, uh, I said in pregame they needed to bounce back. You know, you played a competitive game yesterday – Easily could have won yesterday's game. They come out tonight, scored three runs in the second inning. Maybe the rain helped them out a little bit uh, with how that went. But, uh, you know, they eventually then added on to where they didn't have to use Leiter or Alzali. They had to use Merriweather probably because Ross already had him up anyway before they tacked on a few more runs. But I think it's huge that they, they, they won by this much and didn't have to use those guys because they had to use them. They've had to use them a lot in general and too much for our liking sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Obviously at this point with this bullpen, Alzali and Merriweather and lighter are your, your two or your three, like most consistent or you feel the most uh, comfortable with out there in meaningful innings, high leverage innings. But to me, like a game like this is is exactly what they need coming off a loss, um, and I didn't know if we were going to get it because they didn't look very good against Beto in the first game, and honestly, they didn't really look that great against him tonight, except for a few innings. But hey, Drew Smiley didn't even have his best stuff. He walked five guys, but he managed to give them five, and then Pittsburgh helped him out with some bad defense. They got some big hits. Like it was just the all around good team win from top to bottom for the Cubs tonight. Oh, all the way. From top to bottom. When I say top to bottom, I start at the top with the DraftKings king of the game, the Palatine Pounder. <laughs> three hits, three RBIs, two runs scored. Mike Talkman, is he the savior of the Cubs season? Where were you for the summer of Mike Talkman, guys? Is the friend Phenom 
the savior of the season. <laughs> Talkman's been very good in the month that he's been up. Actually, it's been, I think, a month. He's got over a point. Over says 100. Mike Talkman, our lord and slugger. <laughs> um, we got yeah. a super chat here from Foreign Empire. Uh, Five dollars, Cody. Ooh, remember you. what I said? You you win fifty and you lose fifty. It's the other sixty-two that matter. So let's keep hope up. Yeah. Well, our hope is still there. Well, that, that's Cubs. that's very true. Thanks for the super it's, chat. Yeah. You know, no teams has any. I mean, has fifty and fifty. I think as like the extremes of what teams do, just considering how many games there are. So it is. Yeah. Mm. I mean, that makes sense, and that's kind of fair. And it's like mm. that's why. That's why you play 162 games. That's why you mm-hmm. don't really count out. So again, like a team that was playing as bad as it could have been playing for a while. Like that's why you, maybe you don't count them out in early May when there's still plenty yeah. of time to go. And I know that's cliche. Like every player, every coach, every manager says, like we got plenty of plenty of baseball to play. A lot of time left in the season. It is they'll say that every year, no matter how far back they are. Yeah. But for this team, it, it kind of felt like, well, yeah, if they can, especially in this division, yeah, if they can start to rattle off a, a run like this, then but, the hope it be, is there again that, you know. Yes, but who had something. Mike Talkman as the guy that might save the he, season? Like He was the He spark. was the guy we said maybe should have made the roster in, out of spring training, yeah. but yeah. nobody was saying like, oh, the, the Cubs are going to get down in the dumps, and you know who's going to pull them out? It would, people were saying like, it's going to be, they're going to call up this guy from the mind. It's going to be Brendan Davis is going to come up, or it's going to be Ben Brown, or it's whoever, you know, name your prospect. PCA is going to come up fast, and he's going to do it. Mike Talkman is the guy at the top of the lineup. Yeah, man. And, and credit to... He's having a good month, man. It's been a month, so... Yeah. A few names for him. We do have a list. We tweeted we them all out We put together a list. Now, I, I didn't getting, know our warm. Lord and Slugger. I do like the Bambino of the Burbs. The Mid Suburban League magician. Now Ryan and I know what that's like because we uh, played in the Mid Suburban League for life. <laughs> that's the great team. Great teams like Prospect, Elk Grove, Palatine, Rolling Meadows, Barrington, Fremd. Yep. So he's the Sultan of the Suburbs and the Fremd Phenom. We know the Palatine Pounder. Now he's living in Arlington Heights, where all greatness <laughs> ends up. The Arlington Heights animal. And where did he go to college? Bradley. He's the Bradley Bopper. The Bradley Bopper. Which one do you like? We should put a poll out, maybe. Which one? Talk him is... It's that's Dubs, Mike yeah. Dobbs. That's Mike Dobbs. Yeah. Mike Dobbs. We didn't, we didn't steal talk him. Can't, can't take credit for that one. Uh, <laughs> we should put a poll in the chat. Mike Talkman. I, listen, man. You yeah. wanna, we always talk about the front office and how... Why are they sign all these middle infielders? Blah, blah, blah. And from I felt like for the first month and a half we were talking about where is the fourth outfielder for this team? And he's played well enough to where it's like, I feel like you can argue why wasn't he here opening day when Suzuki was on the injured list? And it is what it is, whatever now. But like he's clearly at least that or that's he was clearly that when he came up that he played well enough to where he was at you could mm-hmm. say, Oh, he's a fourth mm-hmm. outfielder. But over honestly, since the you know winning eight out of ten started, he's played like an everyday player, and he's excelled in the leadoff role. Yeah, walks, uh, you know, four what three four hits yeah. tonight. Three, yeah, three. Think about what we talked. Gives you good at bats. Like think about we said we said it weeks ago that oh he's probably played his way into even when Bellinger's back, like he's still on. Yeah, there it is. Bellinger's been happened. back for a week now. Or almost a week now, going on a week. A former He's, MVP is playing a different position. For, and and mm-hmm. granted, the, the knee There's factors. The sure. knee has something to do with it, but it's also like they feel like Mike Talkman has gotten them to a point where they feel comfortable not having to put or rush Cody Bellinger back into center field to win some games. He's played maybe as good as they could have hoped for him to play as far as filling in. Well, he's not—he's not a Gold Glove defender in the center field. He's made some really good plays, and he's made the—you know—he's—he's he's done what he needs to do out there to be a yeah. solid defender. And he's doing well in the leadoff. He's spot, played as man. close he's, as he could to how he played with the Yankees in 2019. Yeah, like yeah, he was what he—I mean, he hasn't. He's played as close to Aaron Judge as you could right now. <laughs> uh, like, all right. Oh, yeah, you know what's one happening homer, in the chat? But, you know. We went—we went from about 75 people watching. We just jumped to like 165 because people know now. The chug is coming. Yeah. Chug it's on coming. its way. And again, I want to remind people, we've got a lot of predictions coming in. 10, 7, 5. 
I want you, if you're at home and if you have a beer bat, get somebody to video you chugging against Cody at the same time. We got it done last time. Matthew, it worked. Matthew in the chat says he has his beer bat ready. And he thinks right. Cody hits 9-3 tonight. 9 mm. one I believe, is the record. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to also... Sean thinks six nine. We're gonna have to compare and average nice. out the uh, stopwatches. I think the, I think the goal should eventually be to get a Cubs player to do a picture and picture chug off oh, versus man. Cody. Boy, that, you're thinking like, big, Brad. That's, 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 that's dreaming. That's the holy grail. <laughs> Maybe it could be Mike TV, Talkman. Talkman of two, 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 Chug, chug, <laughs> chug. Done. Mike Dubs thinks eight seconds for eight runs and oh, gave his boy. permission to <clears throat> use talk him whenever we want James. because we're fam. <laughs> James says he can't chug with me because the doctor said so. I mean, oh, I hear nine, you, five, two. I had a rough weekend in terms of the alcohol right, stop, consumption. But stop no, beating around the make, bush. Not no, wait. Excuses. we got to have the dedication. I'm not making any Ryan, excuses. you know how this works. We have to have this, the dedication. This beer is getting warmer and warmer This, this second. beer bat is uh, for uh, Mike Talkman. That, that's basically it. <laughs> that's, that's my center fielder right now. All right. Are we ready? ready? When it hits his lips. <sighs> All right. Begin. Nope. Del Mendo, about a quarter Ooh, of the way through. Already out. halfway through. He's around second base, out. heading to third. Around third and coming home. Del Mendo. Boom. I got, I got nine, eight, seven. I got nine. ten, seven, seven. Also, I was even. Uh, Braggs, what did you have on ten? <laughs> I might have we been were, early. We were pretty close. I, I might have something? stopped it a nine, little eight, early. I might have I'd say I, we. I say we called it ten then. <laughs> we're going to give him ten flat. Bra Braggs is in the middle. I'd say ten flat. I'll give you ten flat. Yeah, very yeah. nice, very nice. Well, at least I'm consistent, guys. <laughs> yeah. Well done. A lot better than opening day. Colada right. says there was delay on that one. What is it brought to you by the best beer company in Chicago? Yeah, that beer bat's brought to you by the best beer company in Chicago. Be Chicago's cool. like, beer. Chicago's beer. And yeah. the beer of CHGO. Some, Goose needs to, like, I don't know. They need to start sending me, like, carts of beer to my apartment <laughs> so I can continue to do this at home. Which I kind of do do at home, but not out of a bat. Anyway, uh, this team, Barbara 8 out of 10, baby. Let's go. Very nicely done. Very nicely done, Cody. And, and we should point out when we get to who you got, part of this uh, winning, the winning ways of the Cubs, Cody gets credit for something very special that he's done for the franchise. As a super fan, he's taken it from being involved to like, he's almost responsible for the winning streak at this point. Like people are saying, people there's, are saying. there's there, Talkman is one A, Strowman is one B, and Cody is one C right now. C for Cody. Yeah, I mean because of something he did unselfish that he decided to do for the I'm, franchise. Because I'm a man of integrity, Luke. I will gladly take Master Boney, Magical, and Barnhart every single day if that means the Cubs are going to win. It's We're worked. eight and one since I started. The results doing that. are undeniable. <laughs> undeniable. <laughs> Uh, Drew Smiley, we asked for a better outing against the Pirates. It was fine. Well, five innings, no runs. The only trick was, I mean, anytime you can give me any pitcher can give me five innings with no runs, I'm good with it. In, in yeah. this day and age in baseball, I'd mm -hmm. prefer it be six innings and no runs. It would have been at least that if it weren't for the five walks. The five walks got the pitch count yeah. up. Yeah. If he had better control and didn't have those walks... You might have got seven innings out of him. But either way, five five innings, I thought he was good. Yeah. I there were okay, so a few innings where the Pirates really looked like they were going to cut into the deficit, and Drew Smiley made the big pitch when they you absolutely yeah, had to yeah. load of the bases and effectively the wild. And they were all, yes. and they were all because of the walks that he was yeah. uh giving away. He hasn't like he's he's not an ace. Right, you're talking about I, a guy that's I'm your, trying. Like, number four, I'm yeah. trying to like number four, number keep five. my expectations leveled to a certain extent because yes, has he had starts where he looks like a a number three starter? Yes, like as a top three starter. I mean, yes, but his recent starts have been very meh. You know what I mean? But again, like you guys said, as a four starter, you know. As a three or a four starter, sure. Like, it, it's fine. I'm not worried about Drew Smiley, but. I, I think it's when you look at it and he's giving you a chance to win pretty much every time he goes out there. It's yeah. like, it might not be the deepest start or the he's not going, you know, shut out, six shut out every time. But, like, 
if he's giving you five, you know, five innings at least, two, maybe three runs, like you still have a shot to win at that point. Um, I think that's as you guys have both said, your fourth or fifth starter, at least what you're paying him to be. Mm-hmm. Like you're gonna the Cubs are taking that, running with it, and if he can give you if he can give them more than what he's giving them now, like obviously that's like kinda icing on the cake for it. Yeah. But like what again, five five shutout innings. If he's giving you six and two, like it's that's that's what the Cubs can ask for at the back end of the rotation. Yeah. Uh, I saw in the live YouTube chat, by the way, if you're listening to this podcast on Spotify or Apple, wherever you get your podcasts, make sure you give us a nice positive review. Appreciate that. Five stars, all the good things. But the best way to enjoy the experience and see the Beer Bats live is the live YouTube feed. So subscribe to the CHGO Sports YouTube page and you won't miss it. So we've got, uh, who was in there? Yeah, Matthew says, Cubs throw a shutout. We get to see Cody's knees. The chug was 10 seconds. Does it get better? The vibes are back. (laughs) Uh, I think it was James in the chat. He asks, what is that mark on your knee, Cody? That's from the wreck I've had on my scooter. So thank you for pointing it out. Ouch. Uh, You are very bruised up. I know. (laughs) I've been trying. You've been playing injured. Yeah. I've been... Avoiding the IL all season, guys. Look at me. Somebody suggested in the chat that you are wearing the tan shorts on purpose so it looks like you're naked. Listen, <laughs> guys, skin sells on the internet. He's we like, know it. He's we like know Clark, skin the cl- sells. Clark the yeah. Cub. He's oh got no God. pants on. <laughs> Cody the Cub, we call him. <laughs> These jokes are so much more fun when the Cubs win. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> <laughs> um. and, and and Becky agrees with me, by the way. Oh, man. Well, uh, Matt asks, is Cody the only person who owns shorts? I think I'm the only person who's willing to show off his legs because it's the summer and I refuse to wear jeans. Listen, I wore shorts My legs year. are so white you? you wouldn't even ah, see them. them so don't worry about it. Come on. I, I, got, I got the legs worth showing off. Come on. Mm. Like, I'm not scared to show my legs. All right, well, wear, 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 G- wear shorts, shorts tomorrow, so I'm not the only Peck one wearing Moses shorts. I just wear sandals sweatpants and everything. Today. It's all good. It's the summer, and you're wearing sweatpants. Come on, man. It's fine. It was warmer today, by I the way. I felt good today. I felt good today. Okay. Uh, anyways, after Smiley comes out, then the bullpen comes in. And, you know, <laughs> when I saw the pitch count going up, I said, let's hope he gets to six, because after that, it's a roll of the dice. That's, mm-hmm. that's been the downfall so far this season. It's been the bullpen. But some guys have the stock going up. Your guy, Fulmer, stock up. Yeah. Was, that, was that 10 straight? 10, straight. 10 consecutive outings where he hasn't given up a run. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they're not – I think with Fulmer, I'm sure it's some like, of those are in, like, low leverage. Well, I mean, sure. even that one wasn't still, not – like, Even that yeah. one wasn't, like, really high leverage. Like, he's not mm-hmm. getting the – what Alzali and and Leiter yeah. are getting right now, like those are, those are the two back end high leverage late inning guys that Ross trusts the most, and, and Merriweather's in there too. Um, That's good use of the bullpen. But I, yeah, it's like Fulmer. Yeah, he you know he isn't he didn't work out in that high leverage back end spot that they wanted him in to start the year. But these are the if they if these are the spots that they're going to throw him in, like yeah. he's got to take advantage of it. He gave up what a hit. If that, something like that. I don't, I don't remember exactly the... One inning, no earned runs. I don't yeah, know if he no. gave... I think he did give up one hit. So that was it was either uh, a hit or a walk that he... The the yeah, he hit a base run. Yeah, he walked, he walked Henry yeah. Davis. Uh, but that was it. Yeah. That's all, uh, all, all that happened in that inning. So it's like, that's 10 consecutive scoreless now. If you're putting him out there, even if it's medium to low leverage innings, mm-hmm. you need him to have success in that if you're going to trust him in, could, at all. And, that, and that's what he's given them for... Ten outings now. I think what would be huge is if he's, if like a, like tonight, Smiley only goes five. I mean, it was huge that the Cubs were able to score some runs uh, after Smiley came out. Like the, I think they put up two in that fifth or the sixth inning. So I think when Fulmer came out there, he it was actually five to nothing by then. Um, mm, I could be wrong on that. I think it was still three nothing. It was, was still it? three nothing at okay. that point. Yeah, my bad. Don't let the facts get in the way of a good story. Uh, if. If he can come in the fifth or the sixth inning, whether it's with a lead or if you're down one or two runs, just give you a clean inning. Mm-hmm. Like, that's huge because the Cubs, they just really don't have, like, the – like, if their starter is unable to, to like go – relief. Yeah, to get – to go, like, into – like, to go six clean. You know what I mean? Like, if mm-hmm. if, if they can't pitch six, uh, pitch 
six innings to where you go to your bullpen for the seventh, mm-hmm. then if he can do what he's done. Middle guy. And get that, give yeah. you that clean six, like that's, that's huge, especially because, yeah, as we've talked about, it's lighter Alzali and Merriweather right now as far as yeah. high leverage guys, and you can't use those guys every day. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's huge that he's at least excelling in the role that he's in. Yes, it's not in high leverage. It's in a lower leverage situation, whether they're up by three or down by three. But they need him to be productive somehow, so I'll take it. However, because it was he was so bad at some points in this first half of the season that, like, like, I didn't blame people for wanting to DFA him or anything like that, and, but I knew that they weren't going to do that because right. if things kept going downturn and maybe they found a way to fix him a little bit, they were going to trade his ass. But, you know, he's he uh, had a big inning. He's had big innings in, in, in recent outings. So, mm-hmm. I, I you know, I give him all the credit. The guy, the guy isn't someone I want late in the game, but if you can just find a role for him, that's all that matters. Yeah. And as we talked about in recent weeks, you know, like we talked about it a lot in May, where usually good teams figure out their bullpen situations in May, uh, end of April, parts of May, whatever. And it felt like the Cubs really didn't figure that out. So maybe it's taking a little bit too long, but it seems like they're starting to figure it out a little bit. I still would like to see some of those guys in Iowa at some point, but in a situation to where you're not relying on them to come up and be like, be the guy, you know what I mean? Like, I want to see Daniel Palencia at some point, but I don't want him to bring him up and you force him into being a high leverage eighth, ninth inning reliever. Ease them in there. If they can get some of these guys to continue doing what they're doing, you can call some of those guys up and they can, you know, and then you can ease them into some higher leverage roles. So, it again, right now it's good to see those mm-hmm. three that I already said. And then Fulmer have another good night. And, you know, Rucker you just hope to build two. off it. Rucker gave you two. I mean, yeah. the game was out of reach at that point. We need someone to do that, right? Somebody's <laughs> yeah. got to do it. It was, yeah. it was two innings, no runs. And I think the best thing, well, if Alzali can – be the closer guy, which we now think he's the most trusted guy in the bullpen. Yeah. With Keegan Thompson struggling this year and back in the minors, I think the best thing that could happen to the bullpen would be Wesneski taking that role that Keegan mm-hmm. left. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and running with, with the way we thought Keegan Thompson would, the mayor would That's a good point. this season. Yeah. Like yeah. What would really change that bullpen is if they still had that role and Wesneski could be your guy that could come in either a piggyback start for somebody or every third day could come in and shut down a game for you until you mm-hmm. get to Alzali. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, it's, it's, if you have Alzali and Lider are like the, the eighth, ninth inning guys, it seems at this point, like, I guess maybe depends on exactly what pockets are coming up, but like those are your, your two late inning guys. Um, so it's going to be a point where a starter goes not too deep in, in the, into the game and like that's that's a role that like Keegan did really well last year. He played that role as good as they could have hoped, right? That three or two and two thirds innings, three mm-hmm. innings. I think he had a four inning outing at some point there, uh, yep. where he just finished off a game. Like they're gonna there's gonna be points where they need in close games a, a starter doesn't go deep enough and they're gonna need someone to come and take multiple innings and get it get it to those guys mm-hmm. at the back end of the bullpen. And so I agree, like Keegan wasn't getting it done and you know, if he if he can come back and start to turn back into Keegan, what he did in twenty twenty two, like that's great. Huge. <laughs> that's, that's huge yeah. for for the Cubs, but they can't rely on that. They have Wesneski up right now. Assad does that too. Yeah, a lot of people in um, the chat are saying Assad. It's like, but yeah. they need they need so, two of those guys because both those guys are going to be starter yep. depth for you. So they're they're going to stay somewhat stretched out as far as like if a guy goes down, they need someone to spot. So like those guys, are, those are going to be your guys that the, that Ross calls on. So they're going to while they're not starting and in the rotation if they're going to be on the big league team they're going to be bullpen guys that are relied on for multiple innings just yeah for one so they can stay stretched out a little bit but also like that 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 role is pretty open right now like I don't think Wesneski's necessarily locked it down I don't think Assad's necessarily locked it down but those are probably your two guys right now that are if they have medium-ish leverage higher leverage type innings coming up and you need multiple innings like those are your guys yeah, yeah and if you can get two of them if they both can do it Assad and Wesneski like instead of just one being successful then 
now you can alternate it. If a guy goes two or three innings, well, he's gone for the next day, but then it's the other guy's turn the next day, and you just kind of keep that rolling, and you hope some days your starters give you a spot where you don't need it. So now it stretches it out even more. That's that's what would be ideal for this bullpen because I do think, you know, we'll see some other guys hopefully come up. I saw Cody Hoyer, somebody mentioned, and it's like we yeah we heard Jed Hoyer say he's still working on some things. The velocity's back. The arm is back. Now it's about command and, and getting – guys and pitched in a while. He's got some things to work on. You can't just bring him back. So when he's ready, he'll be a part of this bullpen uh, this season yeah. as well. Well, if he can – speaking of him, like he, if he can come in and, and be effective almost immediately or within, you know, a short time when coming back, like that changes his bullpen immensely. So – yeah, I can only hope that that's what's going to happen. So, uh, yeah, I, it's nice to be saying some positive things about the bullpen. The bullpen's mm-hmm. pitched, pitched well over the stretch, and uh, it seems like they've found the roles, at least for your high leverage guys. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Which, so, Which, like, I think that was when, when the bullpen was getting criticized so much and Ross is getting criticized, is like, mm-hmm. because for the first few weeks – he, you know, you had like the Michael Fulmer, Brad Boxberger, who he was hope. I think the Cubs all hoped was going to be, or were going to be their high leverage guys. It wasn't working out, so now you're multiple weeks into the season, still trying to figure out Keeps who going those guys back are because he mm-hmm. thinks they're the guys, <laughs> right? Yeah. And so like, like, so like, there's multiple weeks into the season where he's still trying to figure out like who are going to be my high leverage guys. Mm. And now I think it, we've gotten to a point. Yeah, I mean it's mid June, like it, it's it shouldn't have gotten this late into the season, even the last couple weeks, but. Um, now I think you reached a point where Ross feels like he's got his guys. Like he's got mm-hmm. Leiter and Alzali, his back end guys. Merriweather's earned a lot of trust back. I mean, I don't, I think that first outing has like ruined him in a lot of people's minds. Like I didn't think he, like that was obviously a bad outing when he, that first one against Milwaukee. But after that, like he's, he had a bunch of like solid perform, like appearances after he's that. He's touching the hundred. So <laughs> yeah, so he's always had like the kind of stuff. Yeah. And so, like, he's earned some of that, you know, most of that trust back, and he's getting a lot of higher leverage innings. And the only thing about Merriweather that can be a little, uh, I guess, unnerving. Nerving is sometimes he can walk some guys, right? But, yeah. But, like, every bullpen guy does. Yeah, that, there's going to be so. guys. But so, yeah, so what I'm saying is, like, now we're at a point in the season where maybe a little later than he would have liked, but Ross seems to have really nailed down the roles with a lot of these guys and where, where he wants to use them, what pockets are the right ones, you know, who he can trust in those late innings. And it's not probably who he thought specifically it was going to be during spring training, but you got, you got a few guys that Ross appears to trust a lot more um, than maybe he, maybe we all expected. And I mean, yeah, Elzelay, Lider, those are two guys, Merriweather's earning that trust. And right now the bullpen isn't costing them, Mm-hmm. games right like it's it's pitching a lot better than it did for that stretch when again it was still him trying to figure out what who fit into what roles which yeah. it felt like it took a while but kind when, of at a point right now when we were watching the game what was the stat you gave us about uh, pitches at 100 miles an hour oh. for the cubs uh it was what because he hit merriweather hit 100 again yeah right? i think he hit it twice maybe he hit it twice uh, yeah so it was going into today since 2008 the cubs pitchers had combined for 363 total pitches to reach 100 mile per hour. And so they'd only reached 100 miles an hour, like 300 sometimes since 2008. Yeah, 363 times since 2008, since like, you know, StatCast started yeah. tracking. So like there's probably obviously before 08, but in that time that StatCast tracked 363 times. And our oldest Chapman, who I keep seeing and actually yeah, mentioned the chat, trade for Chapman, he had 301 of those. <laughs> so <laughs> besides Chapman's, <laughs> Cubs pitchers had combined for 62 hundred mile per hour plus pitches um, before going into today. So like when you're talking about guys with some good stuff in that bullpen, like Julian Merriweather's ability to hit triple digits yeah. matters. They need it. Yeah. Well, the Colada, the guy who's been the godfather has been telling us they need a closer all season. I'm curious if he believes that Alzali is that closer because now he's saying they need power, 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 and more power. They have no power. He's right. I think as much as they could use another boost in the bullpen from somebody, maybe it's from within the organization, maybe it's from the outside, but one of the things that this team 
is still lacking is power. I mean, they scored eight runs tonight. Again, no home runs. Well, we'll look at the, the Michael. Game, the his, game's eleven to nothing if they hit a home we'll run. Look at Michael in his profile picture. That looks like a lot of power there. <laughs> Kawada, the That's godfather. Right. He's a dog. Right? Left-handed power. Justin yeah. Nelson, the uh, super one. chat. Corey and Brendan talked about what's more important: third base or reliable high leverage reliever at the deadline. What's your perspective? Well, thanks for the super chat. Uh, yeah, thank you, Justin. You well, know what? Let's I, let's save that. Tease that question and uh, do our ad break real quick because <laughs> I want to tell you about the ComEd Energy Efficiency Program that is so spectacular that I can tell you it will change your life if you look into it. The ComEd Energy Efficiency Program is committed to helping families and businesses in the communities they serve, helping manage energy usage and lower energy bills now and into the future. Ryan? Oh, is it me? I thought it was Cody. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, ComEd offers a wide variety of incentives on lighting and other efficiency upgrades to commercial, industrial, and public sector customers of all sizes across the territory. ComEd also offers free facility assessments that can help find energy-saving opportunities, like for HVAC systems, commercial kitchen equipment, or industrial processes. How does it work, Well, Ryan? Luke, let me tell you. Uh, I'm sure Cody's told you enough times since I've been away, so I'll, I'll tell you myself. Uh, an authorized engineer will work with you to, to develop a detailed assessment plan specific to your goals and needs. These can be done in person or virtually and last approximately two hours. Within three to four weeks, customers will receive a report detailing energy efficiency projects that they can start working on immediately. Each recommendation will include estimated energy savings, cost savings, project cost, potential incentives, and simple payback. If you own a business, don't wait. Get started saving money and energy today. For energy saving tips, lighting incentives, or to schedule your free facility assessment, go to comed.com slash powering biz. Ryan, did you say comed.com slash powering biz? You know what, Luke? You're you're a lot better listener than I am because that is exactly what I said. Old ears. Comed.com slash powering biz. Schedule it today. Guys, did I tell you that I'm going to Morgan Wallen on Thursday? I don't know who that is, but you have told me about it. I think right. that's how you is that a country? It. Is he country? Yeah, he's country music. It's a guy, he's right? He's playing Morgan. at beautiful historic Wrigley Field Thursday and Friday. Are they going to cut up the... You notice the turf has been changed because of the Grateful Dead that they put in the vote for Cubs thing, but that's because that's new turf, <laughs> right? Every time I, you got to put in I assume so. New, I mean, I don't know. Interesting. Yeah, I'm sure they will. Anyway. Sorry. Legitimately, I got my tickets on game time. Or my Ooh. ticket on game time. All right? Buying nice. tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Game time is the fast and easy way... To buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you with killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. Uh, so, last night I was laying in bed, and I – so, like, for the la – like, the, the tickets on all the resale ticketing sites, all of them for Morgan Wallen have been well over $200 for – Quite some time. But I was on game time last night in mm -hmm. bed. My second yeah. favorite app. Draft, DraftKings is my first favorite app. <laughs> and I saw that there was some random seat in section 420. Nice. For 150 bucks. And I'm like, I ain't going to get this any cheaper right now. No. And so oh, I jumped on it. you never know. You never know. But I didn't want to now risk it because I knew someone was going to get that right. ticket. You were you know so I mean? anxious yeah. to see this yes. match. You're like, That's, uh, that deal is good enough. Yes. Yes. Not, not that you didn't believe the tickets would get cheaper later. It's that you did, weren't sure if you would have a better chance to get it yes. then than you did that. Exactly. Right. You thought it might slip through your fingers. Yeah. Now, I'd be interested to see as a game time experiment, keep an eye on those tickets and see if right before the concert, if a ticket in that yeah. same area would have been even cheaper than that. I probably will. I feel like they would have been. I probably it's a good will, exercise. I probably will log on, you know, Wednesday night, early Thursday, and and, and see what they are. Um, and this is like again. This is why game time is the best. Um, game time is a place for last minute ticket deals. Forget planning months in advance. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. The game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit to you 110% of the difference. So snag the tickets without the stress with game time. Download the game time app and create an account. Use code CHGO for $20 off your first purchase. 
Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem with code CHGO for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Again, I got I got my ticket for under two hundred dollars, which is a steal considering how much they've been since like they sold out and people have been reselling them on all these different ticketing sites. So shout out to Game Time. You know, can't wait for Thursday. What you could do is wait and still use Game Time again if you find a cheaper ticket, you buy it and then you sell the other one. That's I. You know what. I, you know, I don't want. I want to. I don't want to say third market, but that seems like something <laughs> you could do. You know, quietly. I could just be like, Braggs, you want to come with me? You can't sit That's with me, right. but you here, bring somebody with. That's right. Yeah, we're not going to sit together. I don't yeah. like you that much. But here's a ticket. But I like you enough to but get here, you. But here, you want this ticket? I'll I'll sell it to you. Sell it for, for exactly how much I paid for it. Yeah. So before those great ad reads, Justin Nelson sent us a super chat. Said that Brendan and Corey had been talking about which is the bigger need. Which would you rather? have at the trade deadline a high leverage reliable reliever added to the roster or somebody to play third base full time um i i <laughs> think <will> be fun. <laughs> if i'm the cubs this season and and thinking about where they might be you know a month from now i'm the type of impact third baseman that would be worth trading for, I guess. Like a guy that would legitimately be mm-hmm. an, an improvement, like a, a, like a real clear improvement to what you've had at third base. Like an impact third baseman feels like it would cost more than what more high leverage arms are. Like I think if you're the Cubs right now, if I'm the Cubs and I'm looking at it, like I don't, I don't think – if I'm being realistic and I'm the Cubs, like I'm not thinking we're going to win the World Series this year, right? So I'm like we can make a playoff push. Mm-hmm. A third baseman would probably help with that, but it's going to cost a lot, probably. A lot more than, say, a higher leverage reliever at that point in time. We know bullpens are a little volatile, and even a guy that's p- pitching well right now may not be pitching well a month, two months from now, especially when no one in that bullpen really has like a long track record of success. So I'm thinking... Get a get a few more reinforcements in that bullpen. Make sure, See, make sure they got the 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 guys that you want in the back end of that bullpen, or just throughout the bullpen. I think that feels more important as far as like if they want to make that playoff push, make sure you got the bullpen figured out. A third baseman would be great. Uh, like we talk about it, like Madrigal's played fine defense, but the bat hasn't necessarily been there. Like Wisdom's hurt now, and he was struggling for a while. Morrell just isn't getting the shot to play third base, and probably won't unless things start to, you know, I, unless they start to fall back out of it and they just decide to give them some run at third base, maybe. So it would be great to improve, obviously, at third base if I'm the Cubs, but I just think the what you'd have to give up for them might be a little bit, a little bit more than what you could do for the, the bullpen. The need is probably greater at third base, right? Like, well, but considering it, but it, it, it's quite – I'm not sure which one well, costs more because a, a, a closer or a high-leverage reliever can cost you a guy like Ben Brown. Like yeah, you, sure. you could start to lose guys. David Roberts. I, w- I would say if I had to make the choice just based on A, what you need, and B, what the price might be, I would say I would lean toward whichever one that price could be money instead of prospects. Whichever, whichever If you can find a team that's just trying to shed some salary for this year and next year, and they're like, you know, we're not, we decided we're not competing this year. Give us a prospect, but take that salary. Eat that salary. That's the type of player you're really sort of looking for. Are you saying Nolan there. Arenado, Luke? I am. <laughs> sort of. Um, <laughs> friend, friend of the program. But you know what I'm, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, if you don't have to give up a bunch of the prospects you just started acquiring, that's the yeah. way to do it. If you can find someone that just wants to get money off the books. Friend of the program, Gary Ross, would like you to acknowledge that Slaughter, Slaughter <laughs> is, uh, is is still in the minor leagues, and he he doesn't he think that you have to like trade third. for a third baseman because of Jake Slaughter, dude. If you, I think they're going to have enough bullpen arms. I think they'll start to. We're get the Chicago Cubs. Up. We shouldn't be calling up a pro, like a a guy who's not even the a top overall prospect to come up and like save you at one position. Not that I don't believe that Slaughter could be a valuable major league player, but if. If you are serious about making a playoff push, uh, you're going to need 
you're going to need like someone who's proved something at the major yeah. league level. There's I, no, there's no guarantee that Jake Slaughter is going to come yeah. up and just uh, match. And I, I will, I, I, I will also it. say that Slaughter in June, and, and I don't, again, I don't pay attention to, to Jake Slaughter or the Iowa Cubs, maybe as much as I should. Um, as much as Gary, certainly. In June, definitely he's, not as much as Gary. In June, he's hitting 192. He's slugging 346. If he's he's not like a top prospect that the Cubs are rushing to the major leagues, like if if he's gonna earn his shot on the Cubs this year, it's got to be one of those things where he's just doing so well they just can't ignore him and they have to give him a shot. Isn't he, isn't he like twenty six? Yeah, something like that. Uh, so it, it, that's that's what it that's what the Jake Slaughter situation feels like to me. And if he's going, you know, he's that's a 16, 17 games now into June. And his numbers aren't that great. Like, it would have to be like he is just consistently good, 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 great to the point where it's like, okay, he's so hot, we have to give him this chance, right? Mm -hmm. That's like he has to force the front office's hand. Mm -hmm. The numbers this month aren't aren't exactly, you know, (laughs) screaming this guy has to get a shot right now, in my opinion. Despite, Gary, I I still – we're keeping an eye on him. Now, Jared – I I will because because – Again, uh, Tommy Birch of the Des Moines Register talked to Carter Hawkins when he was down there, and Carter Hawkins told him like that like, he brought up Jake Slaughter like in a, in a conversation, you know. Carter saying, Hawkins. Did. Yeah, Carter Hawkins yeah. talked about Jake Slaughter basically saying that, you know, we like basically telling saying that he told Slaughter like we see what you're doing, like keep it up and you might get your shot. Like, basically saying that yeah. as like as long as you keep it up, like there's a shot coming for you. So that's that's kind of on Jake Slaughter is to kind of. Get back to what he was Get doing and force again. their hand. Uh, Gary Jared, says you're just hating. I'm not hating. <laughs> Jared in the chat said, hey, the, the deal is move Morrell to third, move Madrigal to the Tommy LaStella role. That's what we talked about in pregame. I, after hearing Jed Hoyer on the score this morning with Molly and Haw, I don't believe that is a possibility this season. Not that I don't believe Morell will be playing third base for the Cubs this season at some point. Yeah, I'm just saying that's only going to happen if the Cubs are out of it and are and are likely sellers. Yeah. If they're trying to make a push for the division, they do not trust him at third base right now in his development. So they trust defensively Madrigal, Wisdom, and Master Boney more at third base defensively than they do Morell. Jed acknowledged the fact that the position that's staring them in the face that's saying here's what Morrell could go grab because he has the hands he has the arm he's got the power for a corner position is indeed third base but defensively they don't believe he's ready to handle that on a full-time basis definitely not handle that on a full-time basis right now on a team competing for a division title so if it if you see Morrell at third base that's a sign that the Cubs are thinking, all right, this isn't the year we're going to make the postseason. <clears throat> so there might be a stopgap guy. I don't think we get to the point at the end of the season with the Cubs in it that they say, hey, Morrell, we need your bat so much. We want to win this division. Go play third base. Everything they are telling us this year with their actions says that's not going to happen. Yeah. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but that's what's clear. And that's why, to me, like, I'd rather have a third baseman than the bullpen arm. And this and, the, and this goes back to what we talked about in the offseason, what we talked about in the spring training. This team is going to give some of these relievers in Iowa a shot. This team, this franchise, wants to build their bullpen from within. Like, that is, that is what they want to do. That way they can spend money on position players or starting pitchers, whatever. Uh, they will... If they can add Cody Hoyer and call up some of these guys in Iowa that I've already mentioned, Mm -hmm. and you you just have a little bit more depth in that bullpen to give you something. If anything, if they go get any bullpen reliever and you want someone proven, you got to go get a left hander. Like that's all I'll say that much. But I do think, depending on if they can actually call some of them up and they show some promise and mm-hmm. and then I feel like there's not as much pressure to add someone to the bullpen come August 2nd yeah. or whatever as far as third base I'm not like everyone there's people in the chat saying like Justin Turner uh Jaime Candelario Cubs legend um you know 
like, what if the Blue Jays go on like a really bad stretch and Matt Chapman becomes available? I don't know. I'm, I, all I'm saying is, is that they shouldn't be buying to where they're depleting their farm system because this isn't the year to buy, buy like to buy on something. Unless that, it's Shohei. And, the, and guarantees the extension, <laughs> sure. yes. Yeah, it, it. Unless it's Shohei that comes with an extension, <laughs> yes. Yeah. then yes. yes. But they, uh, that, <laughs> that's the one thing. An agreed upon extension but by the time he yes. gets to To Chicago. me, like, they need to, like, I, 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 I know I've tried to manifest this team being something like 2015, but, like, that in 2015... They barely did anything at the deadline. I think they added Dan Heron and, you know, maybe an infielder or whatever. Like, nothing crazy. And then they just got hot in the second half. We all know what happened. That's kind of what I feel like because I just don't – I just don't feel like this is the year to push your chips in or even push half your chips in on someone unless it's someone with an extra year of control, which then that means that will – that will cost you something uh, – but I st- even then, though, I still don't feel like that's worth yeah. it because you're not – like, this isn't the year that you're going to win. Like, maybe you win a playoff – like, maybe win a wild card yeah. series or something like that or, you know, like, all the stars would have to align, right? Well, like, that, that's what I said. I was like, are they, they're not going to win the World Series this year. Yeah. A reliever probably costs you less than a third base. So, in that specific question, mm. if I'm the Cubs, I'm probably looking at a reliever because – it's cheaper. that type of year, mm-hmm. probably going to cost you less than someone else said. There's no, there's, I can't find the message anymore, but that there really isn't an impact third baseman that'll be on the market. So if you do want to get one, mm-hmm. you're going to probably have to give up a, a decent size, you know, a decent return for him, I guess yeah. is the best way to put McBaconator it. McBaconator uh, in the super chat agrees with you, Cody. Yeah, he says, this is not the year to buy stamp at, save those bullets for a team that can actually win something by in the off season. It, again, I think that they can you know, add, add something, but just like, like they shouldn't be adding like the top reliever on the market. If whoever that is, that's going to become, or they shouldn't totally unless, agree. unless it's Shohei Otani. Mm-hmm. Right. But the angels are playing well right now. It doesn't look like they're going to trade him at all. You know what I mean? So I, I, I think that at the deadline, Obviously, my opinion could completely change, especially if the Cubs stay hot and or you know find themselves five, ten games above five hundred by by then. I don't know if we're going to see that. I, I'm hoping for five hundred at the All Star break, and then you see what you can do the first couple mm-hmm. weeks after the All Star break, and and go and and you know and go into August and see what happens. But this team just hasn't played well enough to where you you would feel confident in the in the front office actually making like a, a major move like that in terms of just like what you would have to give up, especially if it is a guy with multiple years of control or, you know, a Matt Chapman who is in the final year and who knows where the Blue Jays will be. They're a good team too. Like I don't even yeah, think the Blue Jays are going to trade him. <laughs> so it's one of those things that maybe they could add a third baseman that will be very underwhelming. It won't – like maybe it's another third baseman that has power and because – Patrick Wisdom doesn't get back to how he was playing in April. You know what I mean? Like, just someone that actually can play the position a little bit more than Magical or Master Boney. You know what I mean? Because right now, like, those are the two dudes. That's who they're going with at third base right now because mm-hmm. Wisdom's on the IL, and whether it's really a wrist issue or if it's a phantom IL thing because he just hasn't been so good, I don't know. I'm not going to judge for whatever it is either way. Like, that's who they're playing at third, and even before Wisdom went on the IL, they were playing Magical or Master Pony at third base. So, yeah, I don't know, man. Like it, it is as we talked about in the spring. Like third base is the glaring hole in this roster, and we all thought in the spring at least that Morel was going to get an opportunity at third base, and he ain't getting it. And as we talked about in pregame, it's to me it's a little frustrating because they basically instilled into Magical, hey man. You're only going to be able to play at third. Then why wasn't Morrell able to just work at third base like the entire offseason or even in spring? He barely played any third base in the spring. He didn't play any third base in Iowa. Like, I'd, whether it's on Morrell because he just isn't good at it or whether it's on the team for not instilling that, hey, this is a spot for you, Like I, I don't I don't know what to make of it. It. To me, it's just a frustrating thing because it's like an easy thing. It should be an easy fix, in my opinion, based off the type of player he is and what his what he is physically. They're saying that though, like they, that's basically what Jed said is like mm-hmm. that's 
we see that he could be a really good fit at that. He's just not there in his development yeah. defensively, and, right? And to, and, and to some extent, like, I totally understand. I just, I don't know. Like, I can't believe that Madrigal is a better defensive third baseman than Morel. And the only reason I can say that is because they haven't let us see Morel play third base since last year where, honestly, the only thing that we saw that was a problem was his inability to accurately make throws to first base from Which that. is a pretty big yeah, <laughs> no, I'm not saying that it's it. not, but like you, you tell me, we can't work on that in the off season. Well, that's the thing is like you have no idea if you've improved at all. What do you you know? We don't. That's know. What I'm saying like I, it is what, the convert the Rick argument the, the conversation is a very like there's no answer to it, right? All we can do is listen to what Jed and Carter or, or David Ross whatever they say, and then just go with it, like. But they've been wrong before about a lot of things too, so that's what leaves me up for question about it. No, he didn't. Rick DeHouse is saying he played so many games at third base this season. My understanding is that's not true. In the minors, he did. At third? Not this year, but in the past. No, not this In the past, but not not this year he didn't. He played 141 innings at third base last year at negative three defensive runs, saved the negative three outs above average. For the Cubs. For the Cubs. Yeah. Uh, Last year. Yeah, I'm not saying that that he was It was was clear that he needed to improve. Yes. And I I think that's what the thing is. Like, I don't know that he did. And, and, and or improved at what the Cubs needed him to do to really give him that shot. And that's not even what we're debating. Rick DeHouse, Rick DeHouse I said, I don't, I don't agree with you, Luke. <laughs> There's nothing to agree or disagree about. All I'm saying is the Cubs have told us they don't think he can play defensively at third base I think, right now this season right. while they're competing for we the all, division. He could be their guy yeah. later in the season if they're not competing. He might be their guy next year. But they are the ones who do not trust him defensively at third base. Yeah. Right now, they, we like it's clear all three of us here would like to see Morel yes. play third. Yes, it's just the my problem is the process that the Cubs have gone gone with it with him because like again we <laughs> we sat here on this show we sat on the couch yes. with there's no camera on and we all laughed at the idea of Nick Magical playing third and you know what credit to him for at least being able to do that this year because he ain't hitting shit this year all right. Yeah, if he, he had a ninety-nine point nine mile pro exit velocity, good for him. Yeah. All right, Master Boney walk two. All right, but Christopher Morel, the like the process of this entire thing is is what bothers me the most. And if and if it is on him that he just hasn't got better at the position, then fine. Like and he that, needs to do that this need, offseason. He's got to know figure, he can he's, swing he's, the bat. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's got to be able to get better at that because that is the one spot where you could just slot him in if he can. Managed to be just even an average player at third. Fernando with a super chat saying the sports book opens up next week. Money is there. Hell yeah, baby. Show me Shohei. (laughs) We had another super chat. Oh, we have another one. I saw something from uh, Braggs in the stands. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know if we know that. I wonder who Braggs in the stands is. moron in the the stands. Guy in the stands. Right, I was just dance. I don't see the super chat we, we have to read I just it. wanted to know why. Well, I'm sorry. I, I I just wanted to know why we can't have both. You guys keep. <laughs> there you oh, there it is. Up. Five dollars. Bragg's in the stands. Five dollars. Bragg's. That's Greg it. Bragg's only the only man losing money at work. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, not the smartest. <laughs> the Bragg's in the stands. He says, "Why can't they add both a reliever and a third baseman? And am I supposed to be working?" <laughs> Bragg's comes uh, home and starts. I, okay. I was work, Daddy. I lost a hundred dollars on super chats. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> I mean that's a good point though, Braggs. Like, I, again, I think they could they could add at both those those things. I just don't think it will be anything that will put the team over the top. Yeah, or I don't think it's going to make them any series. like anything more exciting than they already are. You know? I, I'm with you, Cody, when it comes to Morell at third base. We saw it in our pregame chat. People bringing up his numbers, albeit in a small sample size. But from what I've seen at third base, there's been plenty of botched plays at third base, and it's the, the guys aren't Christopher Morrell. Right. So if you need offense, you guys are saying we need power. He brings you power. They play good defense everywhere else on the field. Can't you take some lumps there? Even if you're, you're already getting errors there anyway. I was just there on Sunday, and there was an error. So what you're third. saying is mm-hmm. it's bad enough at third base. How much worse could it really be? <laughs> Right, in, in his small sample size, but I don't think shows the thing it's is not I, as bad as. I mean, that's damning no, that I'm the Cubs be. think it's that would be that much worse. Yeah, but I, I, I think I don't. 
Like I think you're talking about the morale, the one or not morale, the magical, the one that hit off his glove. Yeah, trying yeah wisdom, to I mean, I had a lot of had, makers. Mark, and I mean, wisdom he, has he, him last week too. He hasn't had the best season at third base since April. Right. Like, the, yeah, I mean, that's that's the point. Is like we're that's the point we keep trying to make is, even though they're not saying it out loud that they don't trust morale there, like. There's a reason that they haven't really yeah. given him any run this year. Chet you know? basically said it on the radio yeah, today. Like, too, but like, we're trying to compete for a division. That's we thing. think we need better defense for our pitchers at third base. He's not. I'm not saying that his defense. Like, I, I'm not. If you guys are saying, "Hey, the guys that are playing <laughs> third base aren't that great defensively," how much worse could he be? I'm not disagreeing with you. The yeah. Cubs are. Yeah. Yeah. I, I also think it's like I, Braggs. You, you mentioned like taking taking some lumps. I think the Cubs have already done that. Like, they've taken too many lumps that they're still trying to claw their way back in. And that's another aspect where it's like, if they don't trust Morrell at third base to play, to make all the good, to make all the routine plays, if they can't trust that, they don't want to, they don't want to risk taking more lumps. Like, that's, no, that's they what can it, still that's what get Morrell like in the lineup with the DH. Yeah. Basically, yeah. what you're saying is there another DH that you need to see in the lineup so bad that you need to put Morrell at third base? Right now, the answer is no. Like, if Mervis were here and were thumping, now the conversation might change, you know? Mm. First of all, Bellinger might go back to center. He might have lots of things could happen. But right now, they don't have another guy that is just bringing a big bat to the ballpark and saying, I need to be your DH. Right now, Morrell is that DH. So let's let's see what happens. And I, I think Jared in the chat or somebody said, Listen, if, if Bellinger can play first base for the first time in three years, Bellinger's an elite defender. Yeah, he's, he was a really good first baseman before they moved him out there. Really good first baseman, really good right fielder, really good center fielder. Morell hasn't shown us yet. I will, I will defend the Cubs in this. Morell hasn't shown us yet that he's a good defender anywhere. Yeah, it's Except a nice for second. tonight. Except for he did make a nice play in right field. Mm-hmm. And that's why I say, like, currently, if that's what the Cubs believe, don't play him at third base. Mm-hmm. I'm DH every night. Or I'm right field when Saya needs to get off his feet. Well, at this like, it's one of the three outfield positions. Like he, yeah, I, and get, I don't know if it's center. I, I give him credit for playing a better corner outfield than like the start. Like again, like the game in Houston, the game at Wrigley, I think against the Reds where he got lost the ball in the sun. Um, he, he made some nice catches tonight. So if he could just at least make the routine plays and, you know, every now and then use his athleticism to make some, some nice catches, fine. But again, though, like, you have your three – you have your you have two of your three guys already. Like, you're going to play Ian Happ every day, and you're going to play Say Suzuki every day. And Mike Talkman, he's already better defensively than you, and he's leading <laughs> off of your team, and yeah. it's sparking your team. Well, and he's yeah. going to play. So, yeah, it's either DH – He's playing so well that they are running Cody Bellinger at first base. Yeah. Like <laughs> – like so like it's, it's DH like with that. or corner outfield. whoever someone is you know wants to it's DH or like if today you play for someone, someone DH, who's going right? to DH resting next somebody night. at corner outfield yeah. and Rick DeHouse says I disagree he's great at the corner outfield no nah, what he I, is is he can make a spectacular play and then he can make a play in Houston where he misjudges the ball and it bounces around mm-hmm. in the corner like yeah. that is Morell in a nutshell like Morell is. Swing and miss at two pitches horribly, and the next one he hits 115 miles an hour off the bat. Like, <laughs> that's what makes him so fun to watch. Mm-hmm. But defensively, that's not, that's not as fun when you're counting on defense being one of the keys to your winning success. I think he's, I think he's the DH until they decide they're out of contention, if that happens. Yeah. That that's how I, it, I think it's gonna boil down. Nathan yeah. Nathan in the chat throwing out some good <laughs> magical defensive stats. Oh, you love to read 88th that, percentile sure. for outs above average, despite being in the 45th for arm strength. Yeah, that is kind of wild, and I think we've seen it. Like I mean, anecdotally, right? Like he's made some really good reads on plays, like right off the bat, to be because he has to without the strong arm, like he has to have good instincts over there. He has to know yeah. where that ball is going to go off the bat so that he can charge if he has to or, you know, go to the side. Like, so he can get himself in a good defensive position to make really, like, put all his body into that kind of throw across the diamond. And, yeah, like it's – again, he's, he hasn't been a gold glove defender, but he's been fine. He's done – made most of the the 
routine plays. He's made those look routine. You know, again, that one on Sunday, maybe if he was taller, he, he catches that one versus a hitting off his glove. But at that point, it's like you're you have a guy who's playing well at playing defensively well at third base, and I think that's kind of what the whole kind of what we've been talking about is like they they feel like they can trust him at third base to make the plays they need that's not costing them games. Yeah, Morel, Morel has to play every day. It just might not be in the field, but they need his. There's no question yeah. they need his back. When he's on absolutely. a run like he been on the last nine or so. Oh, games it, like, yeah. he's on a heater. And and uh, who was it? Cole in the chat said, "It's not Javi's not the comp. It's Soriano." I think I said that last week. He reminds me of Soriano a lot. Although Soriano, before he ripped the quad off the bone, <laughs> was a really good outfielder. Mm-hmm. Was was like a superstar type he was player. A, he was a superstar type player. Yeah. It, the injury changed a lot of that. That's why I got paid um, a lot of money. Yeah. Goose Island, the official beer of CHGO, Chicago's beer since 1988. Their beer roster, the Goose IPA, the Tropical Beer Hug, the 312 Wheat Ale, which went down in 10 seconds flat in a beer bat today, and the Full Pocket Pilsner, which we need to restock because that is Cody's preferred beer bat chugging beer. It is beer. preferred, yeah. Uh, grab Ultra Fresh Brewery exclusive beers at Goose Island, the original brew house on Clybourne Avenue in Lincoln Park, or from the tap room on Fulton Street in Westtown, Goose Island Beer Company, Chicago's <laughs> beer. And while you're at it, picking up some fresh Goose Island tonight, come back home and then sit in front of your computer and sign up to be a CHGO diehard. Mm. Got a lot of season left. Ryan Herrera's got a lot of great stuff he wants you to read. Oh, yeah. Some of it is behind a paywall. Not all of it. Some of it. Some of it is behind a paywall. You want to get want, you want you want me to answer your questions in a mailbag? Like, got to be a diehard. Get into that Discord. Yeah, get into that Discord. You got to be a diehard. You get the free diehard card, which gets you almost anywhere in Chicago. Gets you in, through a lot of you no know, waiting lines. You don't wait with that. And most importantly, you get the free T-shirt out of the CHGO locker mm-hmm. every year. CHGO locker, and you get the discounts. Twenty percent off our merch all the time. Twenty percent off. Our activities, we're going to start to have some, well, there going to be some great Bears tailgates. Braggs is already playing. We're doing stuff for He's got the band backed year. up with the De- Devin Hester video playing on the yeah. on the screen. I, right? We're definitely doing something Look for Crosstown. He's not even paying attention to me. Too. If, as far as baseball, we're definitely it's, doing something for Crosstown, I'm sure. Braggs is already oh. setting up the Bears tailgates. Oh, Believe yeah. Me. Let me let me just figure out how to produce your show properly. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Rick DeHouse is yelling at me, listen, Luke. Rick DeHouse, I love you. Um, <laughs> How's it feel to be yelled and, and at? We love that you're always here. We, we have loyal loyal people in the chat every night. Mm-hmm. And Rick does one. Craig's one. Bar, um, Fly the Dub. We, we love all of them. Thank, thank you for everybody. Colada. Uh, all right. Shout Luke. out to Jared. He was he was hanging out with us at Murphy's uh, Jared Rex. on Friday. Yeah, Jared Rex. Yep. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got to hang with Jared. Uh, then we went and saw the uh, Cubs beat the Orioles, which I got to bl- admit, I was a little surprised they won two out of three in that series. <laughs> You're one and zero when you attend. One and zero when I attend this season. That's there right. Is. Batting a thousand. Look uh, at your stuff. Okay, I guess Luke won. Who you got today? Who you we got? Can, we can wrap it up after that. That's right, the Talkinator with my twentieth win of the season. Nineteenth. Palatine Pounder. Nineteenth win. All I know is Master Boney walked and the Cubs won. Again, Cody has chosen certain players that seem it seems to be some sort of I don't know if it's a formula you want to call it, but it's something. Del Metrics knows all, baby. It's Del Metrics. Del Metrics knows all. Uh, 185 people still watching. We appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you. And please hit the like button on the way out. We get 93. Let's get us to a hundred. It's always the one right guy that gives us a thumbs down. And whoever gave us the we thumbs down, the can you should you should thumbs. You should get rid of that and thumbs up. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Uh, we got five, five, more, five more to 100. Three more to 100. I yeah, will sit here on. and wait until I see 100. Hit, Barb, Barb says hit like for free 312 on Stucky. Stucky. I'm going to have to go hit like. Myself. Cole says. Hey, Gerard says Palatine Pounder. That's right. Cole says Detroit 102. would have to eat a yeah, lot of money if they did. I'd trade Madrigal for Baez. Honestly, I'd be down for that. <laughs> Madrigal for third. Baez? Wolf? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Sign me up for that. All would cost is cash. Over 100 likes. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. Chat's the best. Appreciate it. Thanks to everybody that watched today. Wow, 107 now. Now you guys are making us blush. <laughs> uh, we'll be back here for post-game show tomorrow. Hopefully the Cubs keep this rolling. Mm. 
They've got Marcus Stroman, the ace on the mound, a chance to take another series against the Pirates. They are the red-hot Chicago Cubs. We'll see you back here for the CHGO Cubs podcast tomorrow night, right after the game. Until then, thanks for watching and fly the W.